Hi, everybody. Beverly Ryder. So let's see if we can start. That's me. Um, I'm with Tonymous, which is a subsidiary of Neom. And today we're going to talk about the future of the workforce, but really it's going to be the future of life. I'm going to start with this video, which I don't think you can hear the music to. There we go. Or what if you could make the best choice every time? And what if surprise gifts didn't arrive at surprising times? What if technology predicted all these things and more so that you could be unpredictably human? Visit autonomous.com. Okay, so work-life play. So this is an interesting thing. Last night, when I was dreaming in the middle of the night with the very little sleep I got due to my jet lag, I had a dream about this presentation. Super interesting, because that's not something I normally do. I normally get on stage, talk to you, have a conversation, which you'll notice I'm a little bit different like that. And um, instead, I was dreaming about this, and I was thinking about something that happened 12 years ago. So 12 years ago, I was asked to write a, it's called a six-pager. So when you go and you present to Amazon, um, they say, look, it's great. We don't want you to give us a PowerPoint presentation. We do not want you to sit in the room and tell us why you're great. We don't want to see any pictures. You get six pages to describe to us in double space what your answer is. And the question was for them, what's next? So I was the chief commercial officer for General Electric at the time. And they said, OK, if you could do anything in the workplace, if you could change anything in the work-life balance, and we were able to give you that dream, what would it look like and how would you do it? And I had six pages to describe it. So I thought about it, right? And this is what I'm dreaming about last night. It was actually like my six-pager was coming to life because it's so similar to where we are today. The difference is today, we can actually make it a reality. It's not anymore the bleeding edge. It isn't that we have to be in one place we don't have to figure out how do we go to the office and get home in time. We actually can work from home. And I have to tell you, 12 years ago, that really wasn't the case. Almost everybody went to the office, right? So we've been thinking about it a lot. And what happens next? So if we're going to work, if we're going to live, and we're going to play, people talk about the work-life balance. And just a second ago, I was in the green room waiting, and there were some people that are a little bit younger than me, about 20 years younger than me. And they were talking about how the fact that it's really now, how do you live and you work so that you can live, not so that you live so you can work. And that's a big change that we've had over the past couple of decades. And it really is enhanced by three different things. One, the ability of the internet and AI to predict for us, to allow us to schedule ahead, to plan ahead, to create an environment in our life that allows for us to enjoy our time more, also to give us more time. So how are we going to get more time? We're going to talk about that. My stuff's not moving. Here we go. So autonomous, let me tell you why I want to talk about autonomous for a second. So what we're looking at right now is how do we create our ecosystem, right? And in order to create a different dichotomy, a different dichotomy for work and life, we have to figure out a different way to do it. And the only way we can do that is through partnering with each and every one of you, through finding the best talent, and also then taking that talent and pushing the boundaries of what's possible. And that's what I want to do. So if you're looking for us, first of all, the easiest way to get a hold of me, beverly.rider at neom.com. Now you all have the direct thing. I answer every email I get. So if you need me or you want a partner or you're thinking that there's something you see today, that is how to get a hold of me. So this. This is what it looked like, I think, for most of us for the past three years. Right? This was my COVID experience. I don't know if it was yours, but this was mine. I spent a lot of time in this little box. And one of the things we started to think about, right? and I'm sure you did too, first of all, you can't see body language when you're in a box. Secondly, you felt a little bit disconnected. At least you still got to see people, but you weren't interacting with them every day. You didn't go to the water cooler, or I don't know what you guys call it here, wherever you get water, bottle of water or whatever. At Neom, we get it out of this big, huge box and put our um, water bottle underneath it. Um, but when you went there, you weren't able 
to have that type of interaction. You didn't feel that sense of community. So as we look at the future of work and the future of life, and as we can be anywhere, for those of you that have been in the room for a while, I've seen avatars, I've heard about chat, GBT, I've heard a lot of things that we can do in order to not be there in person. How do we keep that sense of community? And also, how do we make sure that in the future, in the metaverse opportunities, when we're doing digital twins and we're working in different places but all collaborating together, how do we keep that sense of community and how we don't lose our humanity in the process? So, how do we maintain these human connections? For me, there's a bunch of different things we can do. So the great thing about the opportunity we have, both in Digital Twin, in the metaverse, in looking at humanoids and looking at robotics, even looking at, you know, if I want to be a hologram today, I could have come to you in hologram form, but I didn't think it would be as interactive. Um, but how do we make that a more human connection? And how do we make sure that we don't lose those elements of humanity? So, the thing is, is that as humans, right, we need that human interaction. We need to see, like I'm looking because these, these lights are in my eyes, it's hard to see all of you. But I want to be able to see you, I want to see, are we connecting together, right? It's the same thing as we're doing this. So in the metaverse, which is, you know, one of my favorite new technologies, I don't know about all of yours, I can't wait to have my office in the metaverse. I can't wait to have my first team meeting in the metaverse. I have um, a young friend of mine, and he just got hired by SAP. And this is a huge inter interesting thing. He's, going, he's in his 20s, and he is now going to the metaverse to have his work in his office space. So he wakes up in the morning, he gets on his computer, he puts on his goggles, which someday we're not going to have them because I can't wait until that happens, and he goes into his office that way and he commutes with his other um, colleagues in that metaverse. Now what that gives him from a life perspective, think about this, you have a 26-year-old that is going to go to four different continents this year. He's gonna spend three months with his new bride and they're gonna go and live all over the world and have that interaction. So why is that good for SAP, right? We have to really think about it. So SAP is using the metaverse so that their employees can come in remotely and have this great life experience, but it also gives them diversity and inclusion of thought. And that's what I'm gonna to talk to you about next. Why is this good for humanity? Why is this good for the world? So. This is my goggles. I'm really hoping, if any of you out there are inventors, please get to the glasses the fastest because I just want a pair of glasses that I put on and not these big bumps. So here's another way, right? We're all separate. We can see it in the 3D. This is when everybody has glasses. I love this one. So how do we create that, right? And why do we create it? And how do we move forward? So as we have the metaverse, right, and we're there, and we're working together, how do we create the communities? So I was on a panel yesterday on the main stage, and one of the things we talked about was the ability to have a larger metaverse that everybody can be included in, but then also have the smaller communities within that where you feel engaged, where you feel part of it, where you have common interests, and where people are helped in and where they need to. So in some metaverse situations, and for work as well, we need security, we need privacy, we need to have confidential information exchanged, right? So that's super important. That's one of the first things we have to figure out in the metaverse. We also have community norms, right? What's appropriate here in Saudi Arabia probably is a little bit different than in Florida, USA. Right? There's just different norms. So how do we make you feel comfortable in that environment, and how do we start that? Some people say that's the government's perspective. It should be the government that sets that. Some people think it should be a community like this, right? We could all get in a room, figure it out, come together. I don't know what you guys are thinking, but for me, today in the world, we're a little bit splintered. And even in the country that I come from, you know, there's, there's a bunch of different ideas, and there's not a cohesion of thought. What I believe, and what I hope all of you will help us with, is that as we move forward, and as we create these communities, and as we create the new metaverse, is that we find a way to bring everybody together. It's so virtual, very, very important, and I believe, for all of you that are from Saudi Arabia, I actually believe you guys have, better than anyone here in the GCC, the opportunity to do that. You know, you have the ability, you have the skill, you have the financing right now where other regions don't have it, in order to really take 
this idea that's nascent and do it the right way. Do it the way that I wish we had done the internet or social media in the past, right? I think that you have the ability to take work life and really make it just life. Like, I would love it if we'd stop talking about the work and the life. And for some of you in the room, some people tell you to have this work-life balance. I, for one, have never had work-life balance. I wish I did. I preach it all the time. I tell my employees, I tell my girls, I tell my son, you need to have this. But really, if you could be all in all the time for everything, and you could use the metaverse, you could use robotics, you could use holograms in order to make that happen, you really then would have this communities with compassion. So communities with compassion are really all of us working together in order to make this happen. It's looking at those human elements. It's taking them to the next step. It's to be our best selves. So what I love about, the, what I love about my avatar, first of all, my avatar has no wrinkles. So somehow she, she didn't get wrinkles. I didn't see an option on there to put my age so that she aged me. Um, I like that she can change when I want her to change. I like that she can go places that I don't have the ability to go and have experiences that I don't have the opportunity to experience. And what that does is that allows me to go to regions and to understand cultures and to understand different people's perspectives in a way that we wouldn't have had before. So I'll tell you another quick story. I um, went a while ago, I came to Saudi Arabia, so I've, I've lived here now for about two years. And before I came, a lot of people had preconceived ideas, right? Like everybody does about anywhere you go. If you travel to Europe, people have ideas, you know, what are Parisians like? Or if you travel to the United States, what are Californians like? So people gave me a lot of perspective on that. What I didn't know until I came here is the beauty and the warmth of the people, right? You never know until you go somewhere, until you meet those people face to face. And my fear is, is with the metaverse, we're going to lose out on that, that thing. You're going to lose out on the person that says, you have to try this coffee. I got to tell you, you guys that are getting the coffee right now, you got it, because that is the best coffee I've ever had. But I wouldn't have known that in the metaverse, right? So how do we get those human senses into that? For me, that's what's going to be the most important thing. That's what we need to accomplish in order to actually fully realize the value. So. Oops, just another picture. So here's my tree, work life. So what I would like someday is that there'll be one tree in the center, and it'll just say life. And on the tree, there will be apples or maybe flowers, I don't know. But each one of those will be all the different aspects of our life and also the different aspects of who we are and what makes us us. Right? This is really what's important. And the way, I, the way that I think and the way that I see our businesses going and the exponential growth in, say, entrepreneurship, startups, you see it like it's rampant right now in a way that it's never been before, is because we're blending all of those elements of ourself. When you allow yourself truly to just be you, oh, I thought he was going to bring me coffee because I liked it so much. <laughs> Sorry, it was fun. He was coming right at me. Um, so what I really see is that this blending, this blending of every aspect of us makes us more effective. It makes us more productive. It allows us to move forward in a way that society has never seen before. And I actually believe that this rate of technology expansion, like you see it, right? On ChatGBT, they were just showing us earlier, it took one week to hit a million subscribers, right? Well, it took Netflix three and a half years to get to a million. If you think about the, the pace that we're moving and how fast we're moving forward, if we can do that as well in our own personal lives and if our corporations can incorporate this into the very fabric of their being, if they can use all of this technology in order to bring us together and bring their communities together, I don't know about you, but when I'm happy and when I feel good and when I feel like that employer is appreciating me, I work harder. I'm more loyal, I'm a better employee, I'm a better human, I'm better for my family. And so that's where I see technology can take us. I really believe, and I hope you guys will join me in this, in trying to use all of these technological advances to use the digital twin, to use the metaverse, to use our robotics opportunities, and to use our holograms and whatever else comes next, because some seven-year-old's going to invent the next thing that I don't even know what it is today. I just hope that we'll all use that to bring us all together and to really shape the way that the planet can be for the future. And with that, I'll leave you with a thought.
but we need video or we need volume. Well, there's supposed to be volume. Commercial officer, autonomous. Sorry. My name is Dr. Osu. I'm a member of the autonomous team. I look after data management. We like to think that autonomous is built by dreamers that have a natural curiosity about changing the world. What we're trying to do is really come up with something that gives people back the time in their lives to do the things they love. If that's what cognitive can do, then that's the next step for our future. Cognitive technologies are those technologies that are predictive. They're proactive. They understand that when you think about the flow of life, it is built around people, not around machines. It will allow us to make more informed decisions by doing less and it will allow us to spend less time on repetitive and time-consuming activities and focus more on being creative. Just imagine your own personal assistant, your very own AI butler. The world needs technology that respects humans' choices. Cognitive technologies make the world more resilient, sustainable, and people-centric. To be able to show the promise of carbon neutrality, of sustainability, creating an ecosystem of technology. That's where Autonomous comes in. Autonomous will be creating solutions to help the world become truly livable. Really creating that environment where people are happy to say, this is where I live. Autonomous will make a world possible where humans, technology, nature interact and meld seamlessly in one harmonious environment. It's about happiness. It's about life. It's about nature. It's about work-life balance. It's about family. It's about finding one's place in the world. The future is cognitive. The future is autonomous. Okay, so I'll leave you with a call of action. If you would like to partner, if you're interested in the future, if you want to be part of this movement, and the movement is what's starting here at LEAP, right? It's what um, His Excellency Al Swaha has been telling us over and over again. He happens to be our chairman of our board, so I get to talk to him frequently, right? It's a movement here, and I would love for you guys to join us in our movement. Thank you so much. Yeah.